is this a subject and sort of period of time? Are you yes. already interested in this prior to uh, to making this movie, or did it sort of come about after you received the yeah. script? Um, I, no, I have an unhealthy interest in the Second World War and the the period leading up to it. I don't know why it's so strong that interest. It might be because of my my father was a you know fought in the Second World War. Uh, it might be because we're in a time of um, revising our understanding of the Second World War, but um, it, it, it's always held a particular fascination for me. And was there much research available into this sort of this, this weekend that this whole film is set over? Yeah, there's a fair amount. Um, there's stuff that um, there's stuff that Roosevelt uh, wrote about it, and there are some first-hand accounts uh, from Daisy, who is in the film. I mean, somewhere there is the footage that the King shot at the picnic because he took his little camera up there and he shot a lot. Um, and we asked Buckingham Palace if they still had this film somewhere. They, it must be there somewhere, it must be, in some cupboard in the basement of Buckingham Palace. Uh, but they couldn't find it or they said it didn't exist or both. And I think this film had been quite a long time coming, it's been in the works for quite yeah. a while. Yeah. So what were your thoughts on when the, the, the rise, I mean King's speech yeah. was huge, how, how did that affect this movie and the kind of progression that this was taking well, at thought, the time? Our thoughts were curses, mm. you know, they've <laughs> stolen our thunder and yeah. this is a disaster and we should stop making this film immediately. Uh, but uh, we then thought a bit more about it and figured that, well, what's to lose? You know, it's a different story, it's set in America, it's about a different period. It's not really about his um, speech impediment. Mm. Um, the characters are the same but the characteristics are different. And I think that, you know, although some people have, have wrongly accused us of jumping on a bandwagon, I think for a lot of people, The King's Speech is a great way into our film. It's like a prequel, you know, it's like mm. a really good trailer for our film. And I think anyone who saw The King's Speech and liked it will like our film. And writer Richard Nelson last wrote a screenplay in 1993. So how did this collaboration come about with him? Well, I've worked a lot with Richard in the theatre. We did... Um, uh, lots of stuff um, at Stratford, uh, the RSC, in the in the 80s and, the, and on Broadway in, in the early 90s, and uh, we've kept up with each other ever since. He doesn't he doesn't really consider himself to be a screenplay writer, although he does write a ton of um, radio plays for the BBC. They don't really do radio plays in America, uh, but they do still yeah. do them. I'm glad to say here, and he wrote this originally as a radio play. Uh, and he sent me the script of the radio play, which I read and thought, yes, this is a movie. So do you think that his kind of playwriting uh, history and experience helped craft the kind of intimacy of this piece? Oh, God, absolutely, yeah. I mean, his, his, his foot, footprint and, and uh, you know, fingerprint is all over it. It's, it's wonderfully written and, and cleverly composed and structured. And how important was it for you to really humanise these characters and help sort of bring out the kind of social awkwardness amongst them and really make them very relatable to people? I think I think any any film for me is uh, is uh, the, the interest is is in uh, is humanity and this was no exception. The, the film about public people, public characters, but none of the film is public. The film is all private. Everything takes place in bedrooms, in forests at night, in studies and darkness. That's what interests me about it. It's the really a kind of the counterpoint between the public and the private, which is so interesting in the film. Uh, Bill Murray is fantastic, obviously, he's the lead. Uh, how did he come to be in the film? Was he always the first choice for, for the part? He, well, he, he was the only choice for me. He was the only person I really wanted to play the part. I, did, I couldn't see a way of really making the film properly with another actor. I think it would have become... Uh, I think the character might have become too predatory or too saturnine or uh, too unforgivable, and I thought Bill uh, was uh, charming and mischievous and forgivable enough to make the whole thing work, and I think he's done brilliantly. Because he is, he is, I mean, he is brilliant in it, but he would be, I wouldn't usually associate him with a kind of, as a character right. actor. So yeah. what was it about him that made you think, oh, this is the guy I want? John. Yeah. John. And uh, obviously, you know, obviously he was up for the Golden Globe. And yeah. do you, as a director or someone within the industry, do you get very excited this time of year of the whole award season? You get to sort of travel around the world and, and do all that? Well, if, if people in my films are up for awards, I get excited. But otherwise, of course, if, if they're not up for awards, then I get infuriated. <laughs> And, uh, and finally, uh, your next film is Le Weekend, I believe. Can you tell us, is that f filming at the moment? And if no, so, I've finished filming that. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, it's about a couple who go to Paris after being married for 30 years. They go up there to revisit their honeymoon 
and to sort of figure out whether they want to stay with each other. Um, their kids have grown up and left home and they're uh, staring eternity in the face and it's with uh, Lindsay Duncan and Jim Broadbent and Jeff Cole. Brilliant, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time yeah. today anyway. Thanks. Much appreciated. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It is.